Hey, Dave from Red Smoke Barbecue here. Now, you've cooked up a monster brisket feed for the family on the weekend. It's now midweek, and the family's getting a little bit sick of brisket for leftovers, or you've made a mistake, you've stuffed up a brisket, it's gone a little bit dry, or it's just not how you like it. You don't wanna waste it, but you're not sure what to do with it. Well, stick around, because I'm gonna show you how to turn that leftover brisket into a cheesy jalapeno and chili brisket pie. Okay, so here's a full list of all the ingredients that you need. So it's probably best just to pause and take a screenshot here. Nothing overcomplicated, and I'll talk a bit more detail in a moment about some of the ingredients. Okay, now that we've run through the ingredients, let's just quickly talk about a couple of things here. So I'm using the jalapeno chili mix in a jar. It's convenient, you can just buy it pre-made at the store. And the thing I like about the jar board is it has all that juice in there. So you can sprinkle some of that juice, a couple of teaspoons over the top of your pie just to really give that jalapeno taste without really increasing any sort of heat. You could use fresh jalapenos and fresh chilies. You've obviously just got to chop them up, finely dice them, mix them in the mix. So if you can get your hands on this one, this is the easier option. Okay, I've got on the short craft pastry sheets. You buy these frozen, ready to go out of your supermarket. If you wanna go there for the making your own pastry sheets, go for it. I'm being a little bit lazy. I use the store-bought ones, it's just as easy. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is melt two teaspoons of butter into a pot. Next, we wanna finely dice one red onion. Then we just wanna add that onion to the pot. Just give me a little time to cook and brown off until it starts to go a little bit clear. All right, let's talk brisket. Now this brisket here is more of a pulled style brisket. If yours is a bit firmer, just cut that up into small cubes. Both work the same. I've used them both in a pie. It makes no real difference. What I will say is, if you can save some of that brisket juice. So if you've wrapped it in foil, keep some of that juice aside. Uh, if you've put a catch tray under your brisket, perfect, use some of that. Now if you haven't, kept any of the juice or it's all been absorbed or you've wrapped it in butcher's paper and that wasn't an option, that's fine. I just find adding some Worcestershire sauce to the pot just to sweeten it up a little bit makes a big difference because your beef stock can be a little bit salty uh, and it just lacks something. So Worcestershire sauce will be your friend if you haven't saved any of that meat juice. All right, now that our onions had a little time to brown off, let's add the brisket in slowly. So no need to preheat the brisket. It can come straight out of the fridge, which this has. Just add that into the pot and give that a bit of a stir. Next, we wanna add our stock to the pot. So start off with one cup, and just depending on how much meat juice you have left over, will determine if you need the second one. So I'm gonna add half of the cup now. I'll add the meat juice, and then as it's cooking, I'll slowly add the rest of that cup. So as you can see, we've got about half a cup of uh, the brisket juice left over. Some of it's not rendered down, but that's fine. It'll render down in the pot. Just give that another good stir through. And once you give them that a couple of minutes, just slowly introduce your veggies. Now, as I said, if you don't have enough meat juice, just a splash of Worcestershire sauce just helps sweeten it up. And just for some extra flavor, whatever rub you put on your brisket is good to add a little bit more into this pot as well. Again, give that a really good mix, and then we're gonna let that sit there and simmer for around about 20 minutes. All right, so we've got our filling simmering away on the stove top, so it's time to make the base of the pie. So what we're gonna do is grab your baking tray, give that a bit of a grease, spray it with some cooking oil, and then we're gonna line it with pastry sheets. So let's start doing that now. Now obviously this is a square pastry sheet going into a round bowl. So any of the offcuts that you've got, you're gonna use that to wrap around the sides and then trim off the excess. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do is lay a baking sheet down over the top of the pastry. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay some rice down on top of that. Now this is called blind baking. And the rice is designed just to hold the pastry down while we put it in the oven. And we just cook that pastry off just a little bit before we add our filling. And then we're gonna pop that in the oven for around about eight minutes.
Okay, so while our pastry is cooking, we're gonna add some cornstarch to the mix. Now, just start off with a little bit. Uh, a little goes a long way. We're just gonna add this in to help thicken up our mix a little bit. So start with a small amount, mix that through. It'll start to thicken up and add more if you need, but give that time, at least five minutes, maybe even eight minutes, just to cook through so you don't get that floury taste in, in the mix. So our pastry's ready, it's been in there for about eight minutes now. We're gonna remove that rice, put that aside. You can always reuse that on your next pie. And now it's time to add that mix in. And once you spread your mix out, you can add your jalapenos and chilies. This is where you can really control how much kick you give this pie, by how many jalapenos or chilies you add. I'm gonna add just a mild amount. So one of the advantages I mentioned earlier of the pre-mixed chili and jalapeno is the juice. So just grab a teaspoon and sprinkle as much of this over the top as you like, just to enhance that jalapeno flavor. And once you've done that, it's time to add the cheese layer to the top before applying the pastry. Okay, so for your pie top, I prefer to go the woven style of the top. So what we're gonna do is take a couple of sheets that aren't the greatest in the pack, don't need to be cut pretty, and just slice them into strips. You see this one here was damaged when I took it out of the package, so it was perfect to make the top with. So again, just cut that into thin strips, approximately about the same size. Okay, so take your first strip and lay that across the top, just making sure it touches the edges. And then the next one's gonna go the opposite direction. So again, just make sure it touches the edges. And then we're gonna start the weaving process. So we're gonna go overs and unders all the way around the pie. And pretty quickly, you'll end up with a top that looks like this. Next thing you wanna do is just give that an egg wash. So just scramble one egg, grab a uh, brush, and just wash that right over the top of the pastry before we pop it into the oven. And once we've done that, We'll pop that back in the oven for around about another 25 minutes. All right, so we had that in the oven now for around 25 minutes, about half an hour, and you can see the pastry has gone a beautiful golden color, and it's just starting to brown up now. So we need to let that sit probably for around 10 to 15 minutes because it's super hot, and that'll just help the pie set, and then we can serve it up. All right, there you go. So we've turned leftover brisket into this awesome jalapeno uh, chili cheese pie, and it couldn't be easier. Now, if you've got leftover pork, you could probably do the exact same thing following the same recipe. What I will say is follow that recipe pretty much to a T if you're using the cubed brisket or the cubed beef. Uh, if you're using shredded, you may need to add a little more liquid into the mix just so you've got a bit more gravy there to put into the pie to cook out when it's in the oven. Uh, but apart from that, any questions at all, throw them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Otherwise, if you like this vid, really appreciate the thumbs up. It's free to do and it means a lot to us. And if you haven't yet, obviously hit that subscribe button because we would appreciate that too. So I'm gonna go enjoy this pie with the family and a cold one. So until the next video, we'll catch you then.